let me introduce myself. My name is Jesse Palmer. I'm an engineering manager at Capital One. Um, I've written a book uh, that's more general. It's basically on testing Angular, uh, 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 just testing Angular in general, and it's end to end test and unit test. Um, so let's get started. So what are you going to learn today? We're going to talk about setting up a test, we're going to talk about writing tests, and we're talking about tearing down tests. So keep in mind that uh, every, all the examples you're going to see are in TypeScript. We're only going to talk about unit testing, and uh, it covers Angular 2 to, f to Angular 5. Um, there's Angular 6 out right now, but I haven't actually tested it against this Angular 6. Um, but I don't anticipate any breaking changes, so I think you're good with any code that I talk about today. So first off, we're going to talk about setting up your test. Um, I, so there's three main tools that you use. Um, it's Jasmine, Karma, and Angular CLI. I'm guessing most of you are familiar with Jasmine and Karma. Um, we'll go through it really briefly if you haven't. So. Karma was created by the Angular team, I think around 2013-ish. Um, it's just a test runner, so you can execute all your tests, and then um, it opens up a browser which you can use to debug. And there's, there's Jasmine, which is a union testing framework. Um, it allows tests to be in a BDD style, and um, there's a lot of functions in there. There's it, after each, before each, describe, um, and expect. And then there's tons of matchers you can use to be truthy, to be equal, and so on. So this is a tool that I'm really excited about, um, the Angular CLI. So basically, you can set up your test infrastructure very quickly using the Angular CLI. Um, it installs Karma and Jasmine by default. Um, there's loads of support just in, out of the box. I highly recommend it. Um, I think one of the big pain points in past versions of Angular uh, was that there were the setting up the infrastructure took a long time. Um, now with the CLI, you can uh, set up your testing infrastructure in your snap within minutes. So it's very powerful. So I'm going to talk about the three types of component tests that you're going to come across with Angular. Um, there's isolated tests, which actually you could test just like plain old JavaScript. There's nothing Angular specific about it, so you don't have to rely on the Angular testing modules and some of the stuff we're going to talk about later. Um, the components don't render, so yeah, it's just plain JavaScript. Um, why, reason why you might want to do this is if there's like a particularly tricky component that you're experiencing some rendering issues. Um, if you use isolated tests, you can really get rid of the rendering issues and just focus on the JavaScript, or TypeScript in this case. Um, shallow test. Shallow tests usually go one level deep. So you can think of it as if you have a parent component and then you have child children components, you really want to focus on the uh, parent component and isolate that. So that allows you to focus on the parent component instead of looking at the child components. And then there's integration tests. Um, integration tests test the application as a whole. Um, all the components will be rendered, and you um, use it to test like interaction from a browser. So you can use end-to-end -end tests too as well, but I think for I personally, my personal preference is to do everything through a unit test if you can, and if it's really complex, use end-to-end -end test. So an example of this could be um, uh, if you click a button that you expect the actual um, route to change, you would do that through uh, an integration test. Or if you have a button that displays a pop-up and you want to test both of those together, um, you'd use an integration test. So import statements, I think that's pretty clear at the top there. Um, but then there's three objects and methods that I want to focus on. Those are a sync, a component fixture, and testbed. So testbed is Angular specific. And um, basically, you're going to use it to configure your test and initialize your test. Um, 
you can also actually create components and services with it. Um, we're going to create a component here in a second. But the most common methods that you're going to use with testbed are configure test module, compile components, and create component. So here's the configure test module. Um, if you look, there's just an object. And basically, you want to put all of your things that you want to render into that object. And then you would call compile components. And with that, um, it'll actually compile all the component the components that you injected into your configuration. So then there's create component. Um, create component will actually return a fixture. And I'll get into a fixture in a second. So a fixture you can think of as just a native DOM element, except it has like angular wrapping around it. And that's useful for debugging and um, actually having a couple actions, which the most common one that you're going to see is detect changes. So anytime you change a component, you want to call direct detect changes to actually trigger the um, change detection cycle. So then there's a sync. A sync is a function that you actually wrap outside of another function, and it will allow for uh, uh, the compiled components or whatever that asynchronous code to actually execute before it calls an expo for each. So in this situation, um, we call compile components. And that's asynchronous. So if that wasn't there, the e each before each would be executed, maybe compile components is still doing its thing, still compiling, and then your test could actually fail. So it's important to put async when you're using compile components. Okay, describe function, I think that looks probably pretty familiar to you guys. Um, so you want to declare your variables at the top, right below the describe uh, function. And basically what I see sometimes, if you don't do that, um, you have to inject dependencies into each it. So I can see, I've seen tests where there's like 10 its with injection in each one of them. So if you just declare your variables at the top, it will actually take care of that. So mocking services. Um, when I wrote this, I didn't realize we were going to spend like a whole talk on this. Uh, but I, I, I'll give you my opinion. Um, so if, it, if your service is doing some type of HTTP networking request, um, I would go ahead and mock that. Because you really want to spend time testing your component, not necessarily a service. If it's simple, then you can go ahead and um, test it. But here's an um, object that has uh, this very basic functionality behind it. And you still want to test your services, just necessarily you don't want to do it with your component. OK, and then there's before each statements. Um, generally, it's a pretty good idea to separate these into two parts. Um, I usually put the test configuration in one because that guy can get really long. It can get to like 10 lines. And then the second one, I initialize all my variables, my global variables. So now we'll get into writing your test. Um, use your it statement to create individual tests. And then you want to put your assertion on the last line. I think that's pretty basic. Um, you want to use expect as to what you're checking for your component. And then you use a matcher function. In this case, we're using to be truthy. And generally, you want to keep your, limit the number of assertions you have per test. Um, sometimes I see like five or six, which can be really confusing. It makes it hard to debug. But you know, sometimes you, the test needs to have maybe two. And then there's face, fake async and tick. Um, so sometimes you need to slow down the browser um, from rendering something, like, well, from executing the test. So let's say if you're expecting a pop-up to appear, um, you need to use tick and fake async to actually tell the computer to wait for a second or 100 milliseconds or whatever you, what, whatever you have. Now we're talking about tearing down tests. Um, this is pretty basic. I don't know. Uh, actually, I don't really see it 
often use, but I'll go ahead and call it out. Um, so you uh, destroy your global variables by setting the, um, their, the variables to null, um, and it will execute after each test. And in closing, um, we covered setting up tests, writing tests, and tearing down tests. Um, here's some additional resources for you. Um, that's actually my book at the top there. Um, the Angular documentation is really good. Um, the, there's a testing guide that I found really good if you want something quick and dirty. Um, there's three ways to, to test components blog that um, I found useful. And there's a link to um, these slides. So there's also a coupon code for any Manning book for 40% off, um, if you guys are interested in that. I'll leave it here for a second. Okay. And I actually have uh, free coupon codes for the book. So if you want a copy, you want to get more in depth knowledge about testing Angular applications, just come see me. I have um, five to give up. And if you want to need to contact me, um, I'm pretty available on social networks. Um, there's my Twitter, GitHub, and LinkedIn. Um, I'm pretty responsive, like I said. You can pretty much go to any social network slash Jesse L. Palmer, and that's me. Then I will leave you on this quote. If we want to be serious about quality, it is time to get tired of finding bugs and pr start preventing them from happening in the first place by Alan Page. Now, honestly, I, I, someone asked me, like, who is Alan Page when I gave a demo of this? And I was like, I, I'm not sure, actually. <laughs> so uh, as far as I could tell, he's either a basketball player or a home architect. I don't know if he's right, but uh, yeah, like, I, it's really hard finding good testing quotes, I found out. So, um, but I think Alan Page, he's awesome. And uh, that's it. <laughs>